<clears throat> all right, shalom, shalom. As always, before I begin, I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakodash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and elders of Great Millstone that have taught us this word. And peace and salutations go out to the elect that are scattered abroad and that are in the hopes of our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai delivering us during the time of Jacob's trouble. All right. Now, what you just heard me say in the beginning of this video, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, are the true names of the Heavenly Father and of His beloved Son in the Paleo Hebrew. All right. The pure language that is spoken of in the book of Zephaniah, the third chapter, where the Heavenly Father prophesied through the mouth of His prophet Zephaniah that in the latter times He would bring unto the nation of Israel, which consists of you so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, our pure language back. Okay. And that prophecy has taken place in this generation where the Heavenly Father has brought back, okay, our true heritage back unto us. And one of the first steps into coming back to that understanding is knowing the names of our power, okay? The name Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father who the world ignorantly calls God or Jehovah, which the name Yahweh means He is or He to be. Ba Hashem, Ba means in, Ha means the, and Shem means name. In the name of his son, Yahawashai, okay, who you see in front of you, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ or Yeshua. And the name Yahawashai means he delivers or the deliverer, okay. And that's someone that we're going to be talking about in this uh, lesson. Lord's will edification is brought forth to you, Akim or Akwath, that may be watching. But the title of this lesson, as you can see, arm yourself likewise with the same mind. Okay, and this comes from First Peter four and one, where Peter goes into how, just like Yahweh I suffered for, for us, all right, like it says in Hebrews uh, three and fourteen, uh, we're made partakers for Yahweh all right, meaning that we got to take that same chastisement that Yahweh made. I'm sorry, that Yahweh went through. Okay, but in order to get through those chastisements, all right, to go through the different tribulations that the Heavenly Father puts us through, we got to have the same mindset that Yahweh Shai had, all right? Which Lord's will we'll get into in this video, but what sparked this whole uh, lesson was a video that the beloved Apostle Gabar made regarding, um, I forget how he entitled it, but basically, it, um, if I'm not mistaken, it went by, we're in the season of suffering and not in the season of mirth. You know, roughly paraphrasing, but that's a beautiful uh, statement because when Yahweh was on the scene, he was not in the spirit of mirth, okay? When the people wanted to crown Yahweh as king, he fled because he understood that it wasn't time to get his glory, all right? And that's the same, um, you know, that's the same season that we're in today, okay? In order for us to get the glory, we got to go through suffering. Matter of fact, um, let me grab before honor. If I'm not mistaken, in the book of Proverbs. Yep, there's a couple here. Uh, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 33. The fear of Yahweh is the instruction of wisdom. Okay. And before honor is humility. All right. So in order for us to uh, to first. I'm sorry, before we get the honor, the glory and all the fruits that we have awaiting us, we got to go through a very rough path. OK. Proverbs 18 verse 12 before destruction, the heart of man is haughty and before honor is humility. OK. And point blank period, man. In order for us to, you know, like it says in Second Ezra, the seventh chapter, in order for us to go into that city that has, you know, abundant of beautiful things, we got to go through that straight and narrow path, okay? Where only one man can go there at once. And ultimately, that's what Yahweh had to go through. He was the first man to go and fulfill that scripture all right of going down that narrow path 
Okay? And that's why it behooves us to arm... Matter of fact, let's read that scripture now. To arm ourselves likewise, just like our Savior, man. 1 Peter 4, verse 1, it says, For as much then as Yahawashai had suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. Okay? And when you read uh, the New Testament, all right, the first Gospels, like uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, you know, it shows Yahawashai's demeanor, okay, how he moved. And he wasn't about any theatrics, man. When Yahawashai was on the scene, he was about his father's will, just like he told, all right? Matter of fact, when Philip, um, if I'm not mistaken, it was either Philip or Thomas Salakia, um, when they asked him, matter of fact, I believe it is Philip. Salaki, bear with me for a second. Yep, Philip. And yep, come. This is John chapter 14, verse 9. All right, because the disciples, mainly uh, Philip, he had asked Yahawashai, you know, Yahawashai, when are we going to meet the Father? Like, what does he look like? What is, how is his whole, the way he moves? This is what Yahawashai had to say. It says, verse 8 Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Verse 9 Yahawashai said unto him, Have I been so long time with you? And yet has thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Okay? And that goes to show that the relationship, okay? Pursuant to 1 Corinthians 11 and 3, the head of Yahawashai is Yahweh, okay? And the head of the elect is Yahawashai, okay? So knowing this understanding of what the scripture means, about, you know, the Heavenly Father and Yahawashai being one. Well, the elect and Yahawashai are one as well. So, you know, if you're perceiving what I'm saying, people, when they see the elect, are supposed to see a token of Yahawashai, okay? Likewise with Yahawashai and Yahawah, all right? Reading it again in the ninth verse. Have I been so long time with you, and yet has thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, show us the Father? <clears throat> and that's the point they want in there, because the way that Yahawashai was moving was a depiction of how the Heavenly Father is, okay? Likewise with us in this generation, alright? The way that we move by taking heed to what's written in the Scriptures and applying wisdom, that should put, that's supposed to show the people that all right, this is a servant of Yahawashai, okay? Going back to the quote from First Peter 4 and 1, to arm ourselves likewise to Yahawashai. It says, arm yourself likewise with the same mind, for he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, okay? That's point blank period, man. Yahawashai was the only man that laid you know that ever lived and didn't sin okay and that's the same that's the same man that we got to follow man so now jumping to uh, the same book but this time we're going to the second chapter and starting at the 21st verse it says for even hereunto were ye called because Yahawashai also suffered for us leaving us an example that you should follow his steps, okay? Why? Because Yahawashai, just like he said in John the 14th chapter, man. Let's go there real quick. John 14 and 6. Yahawashai said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So that's all you need to know, man. You want to live, you want to see the kingdom of heaven. And not feel the second death, which consists of nuclear destruction. Follow Yahawashai, man. It says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Okay? Plain and simple. That's why we should follow Yahawashai. He is the way to the Heavenly Father. And pursuant to John the 10th chapter, 
There's no other way that we're going to get to the kingdom of heaven but by the but Yahweh Shai, okay? He is the door that we're supposed to be going through. All right, the path. And if you go any other way, the same man is a thief and a robber. Verse 22. I'm sorry, let me read verse 21 again just to you know, make it sound a little better because when uh the disciples are writing these different epistles, it was all a sentence, okay? But the way that these scriptures were written are individual but to get the understanding you got to read it as a a paragraph so to speak verse 21 for even hereunto were ye called because yahweh also suffered for us leaving us an example that you should follow his steps right who did no sin neither was guile found in his mouth who when he was reviled reviled not again when he suffered he threatened not but committed himself to him that judges righteously, okay? And that's the same demeanor that we got to adapt in this generation where, you know, pursuing to Isaiah 59 and 15, if I'm not mistaken, he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey, okay? And this society that we live in, okay, is always throwing punches at us, whether it's physically or spiritually, okay? And shit, there may be times where we do feel down. But at the end of the day, we always got to reflect back to the scriptures, man. Pursuing to James 1 and 2. Um, count it all joy when, life, when you fall into diverse temptations. Okay? Because those are all evident tokens that you're going down that narrow path, man. When you're going down this path, there may be times where you may, you know, slip. But then you catch yourself... And you continue to go down there, man. And what? Pursuing to Hebrews the 11th chapter. I'm sorry, Hebrews the 12th chapter, Shalakia. That the Heavenly Father's chastising us, okay? But it's an evident token that He's dealing with us because that goes to show that we are His sons, okay? Verse 20, uh, 24. Who His own self bear our sins in His own body on the tree. That we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose strips you were healed. Okay? Excuse me. So, you know, it just continues to show more and more reasons of why we should arm ourselves with the same mentality that Yahweh had. Okay? Laying ourselves up as living sacrifices, just like Yahweh Okay? Matter of fact, let's grab that scripture, man, because, you know, if it wasn't for, let me just read it, Salaki. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the heavenly father, okay? Us living right now is a token that Yahweh Shai is a merciful power, man. Because pursuing to Isaiah 1 and uh, the ninth verse, if it weren't for the heavenly father, preserving and keeping a remnant alive we should have been like sodom and unto gomorrah all right completely left in utter desolation and swept under the rug man left as a memorial of a disobedient and gainsaying nation because ultimately that's what we were perceived as amongst the nations all right disobedient and just you know a whining whore all right I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Heavenly Father, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. Right. Our reasonable service, man, because we, like I said, we should have been desolate. All right. We should not be alive right now, which further, you know, behooves you to get right. All right. And to really give it all to the Heavenly Father, man. Lay up this wicked ass way of living and to the best of your ability serve the lord all right that's who the heavenly father is looking for verse 2 and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the most high okay and who's the evident Who's, I'm sorry, let me say that again. Who fits that scripture? 
Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, he was not conformed with anything of this world. Why? Because pursuant to 1 John 2 and 15, the Heavenly Father's love is not in this world. Okay? And he understood that. That's why everyone hated him. <laughs> you know, pursuant to John 15. Matter of fact, let's get it. John 15. Let me see. John 15 and 16. It says, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit shall remain that whatsoever ye. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Reading it a little quick, Salakia. And that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Okay? And that goes to show that there is no free will. All right. The Heavenly Father, just like with the elect, okay, he's ordained them from the beginning to serve him. Okay. Likewise, with the two thirds of our nation that have been given the spirit to not take advantage of this grace period and to do all sorts of wickedness. Okay. Completely disannulling the, uh, the law, statutes, and commandments and denying the covenant that the Heavenly Father made with our nation. Okay. Uh, jumping down to the 18th verse, this is the point. If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you, right? If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you're not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hate, hateth you, okay? And point blank period, man. Like I had uh, mentioned in the book of Hebrews, the third chapter, okay? We are made, matter of fact, let me grab it. Instead of paraphrasing the scripture. This is Hebrews 3 and 14. It says, We are made partakers of Yahawashai if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Okay? So we are just like we're going to be partakers with Yahawashai's glory. Well, guess what? Before the glory, we got to go through the same persecutions that Yahawashai went through. All right? Where he was spit on buffeted, socked in the face, okay? Yahawashai went through a very rough path, all right? And guess what? We're going to have to go through that same straight and narrow path, man, that is full of sorrow and travail. Peril on one side, and matter of fact, let me grab it, Salaki, but I keep uh, mentioning that scripture. Second Ezra 7. Let me see. Starting at the 8th verse. I'll start at... Um, I'll start at 6. Second Ezra chapter 7 verse 6. There is also another thing. A city is builded and set upon a broad field. All right, which symbolizes the kingdom of heaven and is full of all good things. The entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall, like as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left, a deep water. OK, and that's what we're going through right now. OK, we're in Babylon, the great spiritually Sodom and spiritually Egypt. OK. But the Heavenly Father has given a strict commandment of how to get through this narrow path, all right? Which is ultimately worshiping Him and doing His will, okay? Verse 8, And one only path between them both, even between the fire and the water, so small that there could be one man go there at once, okay? And that shows that this is a, um, a solo mission, all right? There's going to be moments where, shit, you're, um, you're, you're solitary, okay? You're alone. And ultimately, that's the walk that Yahawashah went through as well, all right? When you read the New Testament, Yahawashah was pretty much kicking it by himself, okay? He didn't want to be around people because he knew that there was a lot of men that were going to forsake him, okay? And that's the same stead that we're in, Okay? 
verse uh, where do we leave off at nine it says if this city now were given unto a man for inheritance if he never shall pass the danger set before it how shall we receive this inheritance okay so guess what if you're not going through tribulations all right if you're not catching hell then ultimately you're not going to inherit what's written in the scriptures okay and ultimately the heavenly father isn't dealing with you okay like a uh, paraphrase in the uh, book of Hebrews, the 12th chapter. If the Heavenly Father isn't chastising you, then you're sons of bastards, okay? And ultimately, the Heavenly Father doesn't love you. Because when you look at the relationship with the man and his son, a father chastises his son because he loves him, all right? He doesn't want him to go through a path that he lived through and had to go through a lot of hiccups in, all right? He beats him so that in the future, he can understand this is what my father meant by that beating, okay? And that's the same thing that Yahweh Shai does with us in these different trials and tribulations that we go through, all right? Always showing us lessons and ultimately breaking down our wisdom so that it can get stronger, okay? As well as your faith. Verse... Um, <clears throat> Verse 10, it says, And I said, It is so, Lord. Then said he, e <clears throat> excuse me, then said he unto me, Even so also is Israel's portion, because for their sakes I made the world. And when Adam transgressed my statues, then was decreed that now is done. Then were the entrances of this world made narrow, full of sorrow and travail, there but few and evil, full of perils and very painful. Okay? And this is what we got to go through, Akim. This is the path that Yahusha had to go through. And this is the same thing that we're going to have to go through as well. All right. But according to uh, Romans, the eighth chapter. Matter of fact, let's get it. It's lucky if my voice is a little scratchy. <clears throat> Romans chapter eight. Matter of fact. Let me just go to the point. Uh, Romans eight verse 16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Heavenly Father. Okay? And of children, then hairs. Hairs of the Heavenly Father and joint hairs with Yahawashai. Okay? If so be that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. Okay? Just like the beloved Apostle Gabar said in that video, man. We're in a time of suffering. Not in the time of being mirthful, all right? Not in the time of throwing parties and all this that the world is accustomed to, all right? When you, and once again, man, you got to read that the New Testament on and on because it shows you the demeanor that Yahweh Shai had, okay? Even when he was delivering himself to the Romans, what was he writing on? An ass, okay? And what is the ass a symbol for? get it <clears throat> here's a heavy definition in contrast to uh, grecian works donkeys which is an ass were pro portrayed in <clears throat> excuse me donkeys were portrayed in biblical works as symbols of service suffering peace and humility and how should i fit every last one of those um you know nouns to the T, man. That's what we got to go through as well. All right. Serving the elect, edifying the churches, suffering for Yahweh Shai's sake, being peace with all men and being in a humble spirit. OK, these are all attributes Yahweh Shai had. And they're the same attributes that we got to adopt in this society that is full of nothing but incredulity, man. All right. And this is what should really motivate us. Verse 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. OK, so all this suffering, all this damn. You know, we all have different walks that we go through, you know, just fill in what you go through on a daily basis. It's not going to be compared to how much glory the Heavenly Father is going to give us, man. 
All we got to do is to hold fast till Yahweh Shai comes. All right. That's what it takes to be a servant of Yahweh Shai. All right. Who went through it first. Okay. Our, the captain of our matter of fact, let me grab that in the book of Hebrews. If I'm not mistaken, um, the second chapter. Um, up Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10. It says, For it became him, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings, man. Come on. Yahweh is the captain of our salvation, okay? And he went through the mud, man. And that should further motivate us, okay? Our captain made it through. Well, guess what? We're going to go through it too. And that's the kind of confidence that we got to hold as we go throughout our day-to-day -day tribulations, okay? And like it says in the book of Sirach, the 10th chapter. Um, damn, where's my... Okay. Sirach 10... And one, a wise judge will instruct his people and the government of a prudent man is well ordered as the judge of the people is himself. So are his officers and what manner of man the ruler of the city is. Such are all they that dwell therein. OK, and you can liken that with the relationship with Yahweh Shai and the men that he laid his life down for. OK, having the same attributes as him. OK. <clears throat> so that, you know, Lord's will, you brothers were edified and exhorted. I just wanted to touch up on this point because, you know, it was actually through a little, um, you know, a quick testimony. Um, I work a night shift at this one, um, at the plantation. And this one woman that was working with me that night, uh, it was the first day that I saw her. And, you know, the demeanor that I was showing off made her open up to me. And I didn't, I really, I was just being calm, cool, and collected and, you know, applying the scriptures, all right? Being harmless as doves and wise as serpents, not showing too much of, you know, of who I am, okay? But she saw, like it says in Ecclesiastes 8 and 1, wisdom changes the countenance of a man. And it's, you know, it's called halayim la Yahweh ba Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. There's no, there's no, um, boasting in this okay like it said before honor is humility as we walk we're supposed to be humble people okay because we're all supposed to be killed off man like i said earlier okay but the point being is that people see yahweh shy in this man lord's will we're part of that elect that are going to be saved up out of this world that is destined to be burnt to a crisp okay so continue to hold fast that which Yahweh Shai has given us, apply that wisdom and continue to hold this faith, man. So with that, giving all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Recha Kodash, double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and elders of Great Millstone that have taught us this word in that rule well. And peace and salutations go out to the elect. And until next time, Shalom Akiyam.